$20,000 to take a vacation. Well, as a government employee, I'm not allowed to accept anything over $100. And so what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a fundraising campaign to help us with this here. Ah, the tunnel. And I've been through a bunch of times. Once again, we're going to go through it again. people needed direction at that time and, and in hindsight I see that I offered that when it was happening I, I wasn't sure if what I was saying was was resonating with everybody but apparently it was have you actually slept through a night are you just catching little cat naps like what's your life been like these last several days so the last time I slept really well from the first day of the any meteorologist will tell you when you have a, a system in the Gulf of Mexico with the potential for rapid intensification like Harvey was bit of uncertainty in that forecast track, you can't even sleep as you're constantly looking at stuff because there's so much preparation that has to be done before the storm. And then during the event, we're having the morning, uh, I cook a couple hours here and there, an hour, and uh, in a chair in the back room of the emergency operations center. It's not just me, a lot of people who work this went on very little sleep, and we, and we all kind of have been talking about it. And what we've realized is we can get by with a lot less sleep than you think you can. A couple hours here and there will really I hate to ask you this question, but what's your take on Hurricane Irma, which is now out in the Atlantic? Well, Irma's one of those hurricanes that is uh, what we call the uh, Eastern Atlantic. It's, it's heading toward the Leeward Islands and uh, potentially Puerto Rico. And then it has that track over towards the Bahamas, the South Central Bahamas. And so it's something to keep an eye on. And I would certainly advise people to the Southeast United States and Florida that you need to be watching Irma very carefully right now. It's, it's a little bit uneasy if you see the, that five-day forecast track from the Hurricane Center into the south of the Bahamas continue on that west-northwest track, especially if you're down there in South Florida, the Keys right now. You need to be really paying attention to it. Jeff Linder is a meteorologist for the Harris County Flood Control District. Thanks for everything you've done for your city, and thank you for talking with us today. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Thank you.
University at Montgomery Online, offering nearly 20 fully online programs, including master's degrees in business and education, all taught by instructors trained in delivering online courses. More online at aum.edu. Good evening. You're listening to All Things Considered from NPR on member-supported Alabama Public Radio. Don't forget you can follow Alabama Public Radio online. All you have to do is go to our website, APR.org. You can also follow Alabama Public Radio on social media. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Stay tuned. There's more All Things Considered coming up next on Alabama Public Radio. Support for NPR comes from this station and from CFP, Certified Financial Planner Professionals, committed to providing financial planning in the client's best interest, from taxes and investments to saving for college and planning for retirement. More at letsmakeaplan.org. And from Mathnasium and its Learning Center franchisees, committed to the idea that when kids understand math, they enjoy it and do more of it, leading to mastery. There are 700 Mathnasium Learning Centers. Locations at mathnasium.com. From NPR News, this is All Things Considered. I'm Ari Shapiro. It's Labor Day, so we're looking at jobs on this week's All Tech Considered. Today we're kicking off a new series that looks at how advances in artificial intelligence are changing our work. It's called, Is My Job Safe? We'll look at specific industries where jobs might be disappearing or changing. To begin, we're going to look at which parts of the workforce might be relatively safe from the robots. We're joined by Eric Brynjolfsson. He directs the MIT Initiative on the Digital Economy. Welcome to the program. Good to be here. Back in 2004, researchers at MIT and Harvard published a list of professions that they thought were most and least likely to undergo automation. And one example they gave of a job that could not possibly be automated in the future was truck driving. And today, automated vehicles are being tested on the roads already. The job of truck driving could be completely automated. So your job is to try to predict which jobs will be automated in the future. But I wonder, are humans really able to make these kinds of predictions? The evidence seems to be that we're not very good at it. It's definitely not easy. There's constantly new innovations coming along, as there should be, and so we have to update our insights from time to time. Well, with that as a caveat, how much of the U.S. Well, I got to give you some perspective. There's constantly automation of huge chunks of the 